Hello friends, welcome back to All and Law. This is a medical video lecture, orthopedics. And today I'm going to talk about condylar fracture of the femur. Of the femur, okay? So you know the condyles of the femur, okay? So let me draw and show you what are the types of fracture we can get from here. This is the one type that's known as a supracondylar. Supracondylar. And the other type we have This is known as intercondylar fracture. So intercondylar fracture, it can be of two types. One is a T and a Y. Okay. And then the other type we have. Okay. So this is known as uni condylar fracture this is unicondylar fracture this is supracondylar fracture and this is intercondylar fracture right so there are types of fractures so it all depends how the injury has taken place if there is a direct injury okay direct trauma to the knee joint what happens to the if there is a direct trauma to the lower end of the femur Okay, so these fractures can take place. But remember the indirect force, like indirect trauma, they are, um, the most of the time they result in the unicondylar fracture or supracondylar fracture. Okay, for intercondylar fracture, you, you require uh, what you call a direct trauma. If there's an indirect trauma, then it can lead to what you call unicondylar fracture or a supracondylar fracture. But remember direct trauma can lead to all three also. Okay. So what's the sign and symptoms of this patient? The sign and symptoms of this patient, they will have definitely, they will have a pain, swelling, bruising around the knee joint. Okay. What happens? These usually the fractures are often missed when associated with the major injuries such as a fracture of the shaft of the femur. So we try to concentrate over there and we miss the diagnosis of this. Okay. So diagnosis is definitely made by the x-rays okay and there should be a careful assessment of what you call intra-articular extension of the fracture and joint um, what you call incongruity must be made okay so what's the treatment as we said there are three types so it all depends which type of fracture he has <coughs> sorry for that the in the unicondylar fracture okay let's take about the unicondylar fracture over here if it's undisplaced a long leg cast is given for three weeks. Long leg cast for three to six weeks. Three to six weeks. Okay. Followed by what you call a protected weight bearing. If if it's undisplaced, okay, unicondylar undisplaced, then you can go ahead with what you call. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, then you can go ahead with a long leg cast okay that's given for three to six weeks if there's a unicondylar fracture and it's displaced what's the treatment nothing but orif that's a open reduction and internal fixation with multiple cancellous screws is performed right so if there is an intercondylar fracture this is intercondylar fracture over here okay if there's an intercondylar fracture over here the aim of this treatment is to restore what you call congruity of the articular surface as far as possible. It can be of two types as we know. It can be displaced in a T or a Y type, right? T or Y. Here we have discussed over here. You can see the T or a Y over here. What you have to do is just for treatment for this is or if there's an open reduction and internal fixation. 
open reduction and internal fixation if there's a comminuted fractures they are very difficult to construct okay reconstruct and uh, uh, but still it can be done with what you call open reduction and internal fixation okay and uh, what you have to do once the patient has subsided then you should start knee mobilization as early as possible okay and the supracondylar fracture it's the best way this is a supracondylar fracture and the best way to treat the displaced supracondylar fracture with internal fixation is by internal fixation remember okay and this can be done by either by what you call a closed or open reduction okay nails and plates can be used for this also okay what are the complications what are the complications of this they can be a uh, what you call knee stiffness they can be osteoarthritis and they can be a malunion knee stiffness you know very well because of this what you call uh, dense inter intra and periarticular adhesions because of this the patient can complain of uh, knee stiffness there are what you call a problems in uh, moving the knee in a uh, different directions okay uh, so what you have to advise to the patient is just a physiotherapy okay arthrolysis can be required in uh, some other what you call resistant cases osteoarthritis you know very well this is a known complication malunion is also a known complication okay and that's malunion can be corrected by what you call corrective osteotomy okay right so to prevent we have to prevent what you call a varus or valgus deformities right okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care